back to Vintage Computing with Griffin Barrett. And today we have iPods, MP3 players, and generalized stuff. Uh, this isn't going to be much of a demonstration show, as much of me reminiscing, since th these things are very nostalgic for me. Uh, so how about we start with our host, any like nostalgic memories, uh, like iPods and stuff? I mean, I know you used to own like one of these. I got it out of my collection for this so, reason. Um, I actually had the same one as this one here. Um, and I used to use it for, uh, believe it or not, uh, bicycle, bicycle riding. Um, and I paired this, I'm not sure if this was Bluetooth capable at the time. I think you might have gotten like a dongle or something. Um, well, no, I used a regular uh, headphone. Oh, I do remember this charging adapter. I actually had an adapter that went in my car at the time. I had a brand new Audi A4, it was a 2004. And I had to have a special FM transmitter that this would sit in the actual adapter. It's like this uh, dock right here. Similar to that dock, exactly. And I used to be able to listen to songs um, through this in my car stereo. And at the time, that was a big thing to, big deal because prior to that, you had to have what was called a CD changer. I know. That was mounted <laughs> in the truck of the vehicle. Uh, trunk, rather. Did I say truck? In the trunk of the vehicle. Uh, you had a 10 disc CD changer. My brother has that in his car. Correct. And then that's how you would listen to multiple songs, but you would have to actually, you had like a remote, a wired remote on your dashboard, and you could actually change between the 10 discs, but it always took like kind of a long time. Switch yeah, discs. and like it made like the most annoying sound like ka-ching, 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 ka ka yeah. ka ka yes. yeah. So it was hard to like shuffle songs. You couldn't really do it until you had one of these. Then you could easily shuffle songs within your car and it was amazing. So. Yeah, all right. So my sim story begins back in like 2009. I get this thing. My parents bought it for me. It was at, I think it was a, it was not in the thrift store. It was on sale at Best Buy. It wasn't the latest model. That's why it was on sale. And I used it for a couple weeks until it fell down the stairs. Ooh. It mostly works, but the hard drive is very on its way out. And they, before we were shooting, it actually started making a grinding noise. But at one point, it just completely died. And I could speak a little bit about that because years ago, we had hard drives that were like this for media. Yeah, they were literally. And, um, what the hard drive is, is literally a spinning disc inside. So when those hard drives would fall on the ground, they would cause that disk mechanism to like break. Also? So you couldn't find, the disk couldn't access the information. That's why they invented the- um, Flash storage. The flash storage. Also, that's why you they, should never go running with one of these. I come across these the all the time that people go running with and then they just go, from the combined motion will mess it up. Yeah, because there's like a spinning disk inside. That's why uh, the ones that people don't go running with are like the holy grails. They used to uh, freeze up lots of times. It used yeah, to when it up, makes this noise right. that goes But do you know why they had that type of disk? Because, because of, flash storage was incredibly expensive. Plus it was incredibly what at the time? Volatile. And small. 
You couldn't get uh, uh, like a gigabyte. If you had a Palm Pilot, it's crazy. If you had a Palm Pilot, you would lose everything when your battery died. Now, interestingly enough, Griffin. I gotta tell you this, we just ordered uh, SD cards, which are flash drive cards. Yeah, they, they're they for cameras and stuff. But yeah, the cameras so are... we just ordered SD cards and um, I was looking at how big we could order one in. So you can order them now, you can get an SD card, 512 gigabytes. Jesus. It, which is almost like... And for uh, comparison, for comparison, that is 160 gigs. That's the biggest iPod there is. Huh. And... Yeah, uh, there's actually an adapter crazy? you can get for these things that actually puts an SD in there. Really? Uh, I have it. I was going to buy one, but who cares? Now, back to my story. I ruined this thing, and I was at Kohl's one day. Boring clothes shopping. And I see in the clearance section this thing. Wow. A Microsoft Zoom. I remember that. No one liked it, and I got it for $5. Oh, my God. It's fresh in its box. I also have a case for it. This thing lasted me from 2000, wow. no, nearly 10 years. It was built like a tank. That thing can survive literally anything. It survived, like, I think a fall down the stairs, which was something, no, a fall down multiple flights of stairs, which was something this iPod couldn't even do. I also later bought a dock for it. And this dock actually contains a remote control. And a, oh, TV, cool. and a TV interface, which is what this cable right now is connected to. Like, if I were to switch this TV, it would actually work. Now, are these all in working order? Yeah, all of them. Uh, this one's kind of dead right now. It's in battery okay. dead. But we could probably plug it in right now using this cord. Wow. So, um, I, I have a little story about this one. I actually had one just like this, but I dropped it. And same thing, the screen kind of broke and it never worked again, right? Yeah. So what I invested in afterwards, when I got the new version of this, I invested in um, a case that it went in. And my current iPod Nano, I have a, a case that it sits in. And it's rubberized, so if you drop it, uh, nothing really happens to it. Actually, my phone case on my dying iPhone 6 has literally survived this thing through like a lot. It's basically, it was developed in that same time period. Right. Uh, which bring, brings us to now. Uh, a friend of mine traded me an older laptop for this, but this is the last generation of iPods. This is the 160 gigabyte iPod Classic. This is what I'm using currently. It has all my music on there, and I'm gonna cover flow it for you guys so you guys all can see. Someone could get a zoom in camera, that'd be beautiful. But uh, yeah, thank you. People can actually see the titles of what I listen to. It's gonna go through it all. I don't, trust me, I only have a two gigabyte music library. So it feels kind of useless using all of the storage for just music. But yeah, it's just a whole bunch of music, only 312 songs. Uh, but what I mostly use this for is movies and downloaded YouTube videos. I have that same one, Griffin. Yeah. At home as well. Yeah, I have all sorts of stuff on here, but I don't really use its entire storage. And the problem with this is, I can tell you right now, um, versus this. I used to have a black one of that shot. one, and get a wide shot. It, it was destroyed as so well. So the problem with these two is, like if you go to the gym or if you're bicycling outdoors, um, very difficult for this one because it's, I mean, it's kind of big by today's standards. Like but, for comparison, here's my phone. <laughs> yeah, right, it's almost as big as a phone. Yeah, and then again, this isn't like the newest cream of the crop. I'm actually, I should be getting this thing replaced since it barely holds a charge. Now, I don't think any of these had Bluetooth, but that was kind of the revolution of the next series of um, MP3 players was uh, capability of Bluetooth. And to this day, I can tell you that when I'm at the gym, I use uh, wireless Bluetooth headsets. So. Yeah, and I use AirPods. Uh, they're basically... I love the Synonym AirPod because it's like the iPod of the modern, modern day. Can't store any music, but it works with my phone, and that's where all my music is. And I haven't lost either. Not trying to flex on you, but they're the second generation. Then again, iPads Pro, AirPods Pro released, so whatever. And what's the difference between the first and second generation of those? 
The I'm Zunes? Looking, uh, no, the uh, Air, AirPods. Uh, absolutely no difference unless you don't want the okay. wireless charging case. Uh, the Microsoft Zunes are cool, even though they failed horrendously when that thing, uh, when that thing came out. Uh, they're built like tanks, so they don't necessarily need hard drive swaps every 20 minutes. And they have all sorts of cool features. Uh, actually, I want to output this to a TV, so if someone could change the TV settings to that, that would be beautiful. I'll come back. Uh, so we're going to be demonstrating the iPod. Well, the iPod classic, yeah, classic. Uh, and it's video out capabilities. Now normally it's not that much to write home about. You just plug in the thing, select the video, and on the TV screen, if someone could cut to that, um, if it's even working because it doesn't like to work, because it's wiggly, because this stupid cable was chewed I hate, up. I hate when that happens. All right, yeah, it's being wiggly again. It's be uh, normally this cable does work. Uh, uh, it's just being wiggly. The Zunes one is way more reliable. And now my iPod just restarted. Oh no. This thing, look, the cable is way more reliable. This just shows the Zune is way more reliable because it has an entire dock dedicated to video output. So I just need to make sure this iPod, I sound like one of those old people, like, no, not old, like young, like when listening to the phonograph, like, you know, it's phonograph ads and like, yeah, it should be going now. So plug it in. Verify that video accessory is connected, and then, uh, yeah. Just, and click on one of my many YouTube rips of popular YouTube shows like Crazy Ken's Tech Misadventures, which is something that you should totally watch right now. Mm. Oh. oh, there we go. Yeah, it's playing his Power Macintosh episode. Oh, there it is. Uh, this does not belong to me. This is a show of another YouTuber called Crazy Ken. And it's just showing, this is just showing the demonstration of video playback. Not, not in HD quality. Yeah, sadly, these things were invented way before, well, no. They never really are able to do HD. And also, it's kind of squished right now. Mm. Four uh, by three. Yeah, it's, it's kind of part of it. Uh, so yeah, it should be fun. Okay, now on now we are on to the Zune dock. This one allows for video, and it's much more robust than the iPod one. Remember, we're having trouble with that. Uh, it has a separate connection for video, and a separate connection for its docking charger. And so the Zune just slots in right here. And didn't I mention that it has an infrared remote? Wow. So you can just go down to your settings, display, TV out on, and it interfaces the entire thing with the television, like this. Oh, wow. So you have all of your like features for Zune. So you have your videos, your music, your pictures, your radio, your games, those were a thing. So I will demonstrate it with a, I have no idea, a Nostalgia Critic, you know that show on YouTube? Really good show, you should try and watch it. Uh, you're probably going to be completely weirded out because it's going to be random. Uh, let's see if it even loads. Yeah. It's incredibly low resolution, but hey, it still works. Yeah, Nostalgia Critic. There's no HD on this device either. Well, no. There okay. were later docks that had HDMI for later Zunes that did HDMI. So, yeah. Cool. You can also demonstrate pictures on a television screen compared to the iPod which is this really cool little background that came oh, yeah. with the original Zunes. Uh, play music. Uh, I don't really have that much stuff on here. By the way, uh, I have a good, that first artist, I have a kind of a joke related to that. Yeah, you can tell it. Can I tell it? Yes, you can tell it. So, um, do, you know, uh, do you know of a computer that sings? Uh, I think you can do most computers make them sing. Uh, there's a really good song called Hello World that, like, was someone tinkering with a computerized voice. Yeah, but do you thing. know the name of the computer that actually sings? Um, what is it called? Wait, uh, the, was it the first? I have no idea. Adele? 
Oh my God, I couldn't like pick up on the social cues. Uh, but still, Adele. <laughs> Uh, I, I was like making a joke. I, I have a similar joke like, dude, you're getting Adele. Like the computer or the lady? And I'm just like the computer and the guy's like, oh. Uh, so yeah, I have all my various musics. Uh, Can like, I tell you another joke? Yes. Um, do you know a soldier's, what's a soldier's favorite month? I don't know when. March. <laughs> all right, I've got a good one. Okay. Two antennas met on the rooftop. The wedding wasn't much, but the reception was incredible. <laughs> so we yeah, should a, we should do a uh, uh, an addition on um, antennas. Yeah, like that HDD might be funny. Uh, and Old school. I hope this doesn't get copyright striked. Uh -oh. I'm just gonna play some music. No. Eh, it. they won't. That's it. it. You know, David Bowie, you know. Yep. So yeah, I think you can play games through this. I mean, I put some games on here, so let's see if it even works. Uh, yeah, you can play games through here. Cool. Please. Uh, no, we can't. I uh, need two zooms. Uh, Hexic, please play, please play, please play, please play. Uh, let's check on the noises it's making. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We just lost the signal altogether. Yep. Uh, it's doing a thing called... Is that the name of it? Is that the name of that problem, or? Yeah, it's actually what we call it. <laughs> Us in the industry call it. Well, I'd like to uh, wish you, Griffin, a happy birthday. Coming yeah, my up. birthday is actually this week. This week? So, so uh, well, let's bring the whole crew out here. Crew, come out here. Come on, crew. Can you all guys get in the shot here? Yeah. Maybe. Oh, yeah, Greg's coming in. Come on in. Come on in, everybody. Yeah, come on in. Let me move back. Is it still recording? I think we're still recording. Oh, uh, this is going to be a very on, fun experience. So we all want to wish Griffin a happy birthday. So Griffin, we're going to sing happy birthday to you. Ready? On the count of three. Three, two, one. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Griffin. Not used to social media. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Let's get a shot of Griffin. A shot of Griffin. Yeah, I'm. There he is. Yeah. Yeah, my birthday is the 29th, but it's a couple days off, but who cares? This has been Vintage Computing with Griffin Barrett. Thanks for watching. Hey, I'm Paul Loops. I'm here at the Blood Drive. I'm here with... My name's Dana Reynolds. What do you do here? I am a phlebotomist with the American Red Cross. So how does this process work? Well, first what happens is you need to come in and read a packet of material about the donation process and some of our policies and procedures. Uh, you sign your name up and you wait to be called and then you go into the health history where we take some um, information about your address, your birth date, things like that. And then we give you a small um, health physical to make sure you're healthy enough to donate. After that, you answer some questions. And as long as everything checks out, you can donate blood that day. I'm here with Ashley EK. What made you decide to take blood? To save people's lives. I think it's going to hurt, but I'm scared, I but think it'll be fine it. after. It's worth it. I'm here with Aubrey. How was your experience at the blood drive? It was fun. It wasn't bad at all. Great. Thanks. Nate Stone. What's today? This is character day. Who are you dressed as? I'm dressed as Mr. Incredible. Why'd you dress as him? I really feel like I had to crap sh capture my uh, essence in a character, so I decided to dress as uh, Mr. Incredible. Thank you. Wait, am I in place or is the wide shot off? No. Okay, you just take this, I'll take this. There we go. Okay. Kaden, you should put this. I'm gonna go turn around now.